This audio recording has been created to share information about books without ink. A video sharing this information has also been made. The video version shows photographs of raised print books and also of people examining them by touch and by sight. It features images of UBCO Library and the University of Manitoba's archives and special collections. It also contains video footage of the three speakers as they speak to the camera to share their reaction to the books. They are in order. Dr. Christopher Keep, Western University. Dr. Kaylee Enns, College of the Rockies. And Dr. Lisa Surridge, University of Victoria. The title slide reads, Books Without Ink, an outreach project of the University of Manitoba's archives and special collections. The audio of the video begins here. Books Without Ink, designed for and by people with visual disabilities, have a rich history. The University of Manitoba's archives and special collections is home to a collection of rare and fragile inkless books designed to be read by touch instead of sight. These books, some of which date to as early as the 1830s, are printed in Braille, but also in now obsolete rivals to Braille. They can teach us about innovation and accommodation, about the history of reading, and about the rights of people with disabilities, including the right to read. As Dr. Christopher Keep observes, they can also teach us about the value of archives and the importance of access to textual artifacts. So this collection of raised print books reminded me of what we lose in the age of digitization. It's so often the case that we assume that we're going to be able to locate anything on Google or on the internet, and how much of the world of material culture then gets trapped behind the walls of libraries. In April 2015, the University of Manitoba shared its important collection of raised print inkless books at two outreach events. The books were prepared for travel and transported to Kelowna, British Columbia, by Dr. Vanessa Warren, a professor in the Department of English Film and Theatre whose research focuses on the 19th century history of blind people's access to books. The first event took place at UBC Okanagan, where the books were examined by interested visitors at a well-attended Touch and Talk event. As Dr. Kaylee Enns noted, after working with this collection. And as somebody who works at a small college that doesn't have access to archives, the opportunity to be able to see archival material at events like these is really invaluable to me as a scholar of 19th century book history and publishing culture. The second event, a workshop led by Vanessa Warren at the Victorian Bodies Conference, was hosted by the Victorian Studies Association of Western Canada. The opportunity to examine this collection prompted conversations among participants about the value of these books and the importance of archival material not only to research but also to teaching. As Dr. Lisa Surridge observed, So my plan is to go straight back to my own special collections and to ask them, do we have any of these books? I don't know right now if we have or not, but if we have, I would greatly like to include them in my own teaching. I think that the experience that we had in Vanessa's workshop is something that I would like to try to pass on to others. Responses of this kind are guiding the development of an exhibit to be held at the University of Manitoba's archives and special collections. This interactive, accessible exhibit will open in mid-September 2015 with funding from a Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of Canada Connection Grant. For more information about this event or the upcoming exhibit, please email Vanessa Warren at vanessa.warren at umanitoba.ca spelt v-a-n-e-s-s-a -S -S dot w-a-r-n-e at u-m-a-n-i-t-o-b-a -A dot c-a. Thanks for your interest.